Hi, my name is Michael Novello from visualpixels.com and here I show you fast and effective Photoshop tutorials to create amazing results. Hi, today I want to show you how you can create this amazing painted pinup look and I'm happy that I can use this beautiful image here. It's from Mariana Photography at deviantart.com and I provide you the link for that in the video description. She does an amazing work and please go on her site, look at her images. It's really, she's a really great artist. So I have to say thank you, Mariana, for the opportunity there so that I can use this image. So I have the permission to do that. Thank you again. And now we will start here with the image. As you can see, this is the effect. We have a really painted look here on this image. And we have here the original. As you can see, the colors are really popping out after I worked on that. And the hairs are, look, are looking really painted, the clothes and the car and the plants here. Here in the background, it looks more surrealistic. And here as well. And it has this really cool looking painted style. I have here the original file and I'm going to make a copy of the original layer here. Then I'm going to filter noise gray C duration. The gray C duration filter is a replacement for the oil paint filter in Photoshop and it's normally made for noise reduction but with my settings here you can use that to create an oil paint effect here as you can see i have the setting strength 110 contour 0.2 anisotropy 1 noise scale 0.1 geometry regularity 3 initial gauss blur gaussian blur theorem iterations 1 and the chief fact is one spatial step 0.8, angular step 30, Gauss precision 2, interpolation nearest, stage normal, threads auto, fast approximation checked, alternative, sorry, alternative amplitude checked, and GPU checked. Then I click OK. And we have now a painted look here. Now I'm going to convert this layer here into a smart object and then I'm going to filter camera raw filter and I change some settings here. For the exposure I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit to point minus point 0.4 and the highlights to plus 30. And in the shadows, we go with plus 83. And then I'm adding some clarity here. This plus 60. And a little bit more of a vibrance with plus 18. <coughs> then in the HSL grayscale um, tab, I'm going with saturation for the reds. I'm going down to minus 12 and the yellows to minus 4 and the aquas to plus 70 to get a really bluish image here or blue colors. The blue colors are now popping out of the image and the blues plus 18. Let's go with that. And in luminance, we are going with the aquas to about plus 24 or 25. And the blues plus 18. And with the purples to plus 44. And last but not least, the magentas, I'm going to minus 38. I have done this 
image before, so I know the settings. And <coughs> I don't test now the settings here in the in the tutorial because um, I have the settings and these settings are looking really good for this image. So I use them. If you have a different image, you should use different settings. It's, it always depends on the image, it depends on your eyes, not on the numbers here. And now I'm going to click OK. And now we have really bluish shadows, but we get rid of them in one of the next steps. Now we have to get some details back in the face and on the hand <coughs> and maybe on some parts where the filter distorted the image too much. For this I'm going to create a layer mask and with a soft brush I'm going um, yeah, soft brush, opacity 100% and a black color I'm going over the lips here, over the eyes and the eyebrows and on the fingers here I'm going to bring back the details. Okay. And now let's have a look where it's too distorted, like here. I'm going to bring back the original here. It doesn't matter too much if there is a little bit of a another color, but it doesn't matter here. It's too small that you recognize that. And maybe here, maybe this was too much. Or a smaller, a smaller brush here. I'm going over the edge here a little bit, just a little bit. <coughs> and maybe on the Fiat logo here as well, just a little bit to get this Fiat logo a little bit back. And on the shoes here, I want to get back the details as well. Here, the small details, the wrinkles. And I think we are good right now. Let's have a look on the legs here. Maybe we can go over that here and bring back the details here a little bit too. So that it look, don't look too distorted here. Okay. Now, uh, we have converted the image into a smart object, we have corrected the colors, we have brought back the details, and now we get rid of the blue shadows. Now I'm adding a U and saturation adjustment layer, and I'm going down with the master saturation, I'm going down to minus 33, about that. And we have to have a look here on the tires and here on the deep shadows how it works and here are deep shadows as well and we have to get rid of this uh, colors here of this blue so I'm going into the blues here or uh, at first into the sign and I'm going to lower the saturation for that to about minus uh, let's go with minus 67 and I lower the lightness as well to about minus 21. Then I'm going into the blues and I lower the saturation to about uh, the same values 60 minus 67 and the lightness to about Let's go with minus 21 as well, um, something about that. Okay, now we have lowered the saturation for the dark parts, for the shadows, and there's still, still some color in there. And now I'm going to invert the layer mask, and now I've activated my tablet, and we are going to work on the blues. I'm going to mask it out <coughs> or oh, I bring the bring the desaturation in the photo and for that I'm going to speed up the video a little bit so that I 
can work on that and you can watch it a little bit faster than at work. Now we have removed the shadows, or the blue in the shadows, not the shadows. And now I want to have a little bit more contrast in the image. And for this I'm creating a new solid color layer. And I'm going with a color 1E, 1D, 1D. It's a dark gray. And I click OK and I change the blend mode to soft light. Now we have really strong colors and a high contrast, but I'm going to lower that to about, let's go with uh, yeah, 35, 36, up to 40%. And it's totally up to you how much contrast you want in the image here. And the next step is to get a little bit rid of these dark shadows here in this shirt here. And for that, we are creating a curve adjustment layer in a minute. Okay, now we're going to add a curve adjustment layer. And I'm going with uh, click and drag. I'm going into these colors here. And maybe we can bring it a little bit up. Now that's not that what I want. Let's go with a curve like that. Uh, something like that. Should be okay. And now it's overblown the image, but we're going to correct this immediately. Let's go with let's go with that here. And then I'm going to invert this here and with a soft brush and an um, opacity about now let's go with 20% or so. I'm going over some parts here and bring back the, the details a little bit here in the dark. Like here, maybe here, and here as well. Sure, you can do that by using the Dutch and burning method. But I'm going with that. Maybe here on this deep blue part here as well. So we don't have two deep shadows on the shirt. Because we want to have the model really popping out of this image here. And I don't want to have some uh, yeah, dark parts on the shirt here maybe here as well and here okay I'm um, I think that's looking really good and 
now this is an optional step but it gives a, a little bit extra kick off to the images. Now I'm going to copy this, all the layers merge together to one layer by pressing Shift, Control, Alt and E. It goes on top, one more moment, so. And <coughs> what I'm going to do is I change the blend mode to soft light. At first it enhances the colors a little bit, but it's too strong. And for that I'm going into that image here and convert it to smart object or the layer, convert the layer to smart object. Then I'm going into filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going with a radius about 2.4 or so, and click OK. And now I'm going to lower the opacity to about, let's go with, uh, in this case, I'm going with about 44, 45% or so. And as you can see, it enhances the color a little bit more and the blur gives it a little bit of a dreamy look here. And we are there. This is the final image here. And this is our before and this is the after. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And again, thank you, Mariana, for the permission to use this image. Thank you. And thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching my videos. Um, if you like my videos you can subscribe to my channel right here in the middle and my last two videos you can find here and here. And if you really like my videos you can support me on patreon.com. Here's the link. And thanks again. And see you next time. Bye.